again shout outs to rooks or he goes by the name of uh 29 underscore rooks in his twitch all right and so this is his uh eulogy and a poem and a prayer reach from the earth through the heat through the clouds onto the stars themselves oh 108 you grasp and they gather around you like a crown Be you contemplative and epic, compassionate and fierce, for kindness is the greatest of all, that is martial and magic. The stars you sought are now yours, and with them you dance and dine. Never again will you suffer and run free now, for we will take the mantle and burdens plenty from you and keep them in your stead. Amen. For you should take a murayama, a poem, and a prayer. Alright. That's the least I could do for murayama. And yeah, let's just start the game. Alright, so this is uh, Securing Card Stories. Like, uh, not a lot of people know this game. So basically, this game was made in uh, I think two thousand one, like about a year before Securing Two got uh, before Securing Three got released. And uh, it's there's no English translation of this game. It was only released uh, in Japan. But uh, back in two thousand thirteen, which is like about twelve years after this game was released. Uh, someone by the name of Pokitex created a fan translation patch of this, which lets people like me to play and speedrun the game. And there's a bit of tutorial here, but uh, this is a speedrun, right? so obviously we're going to skip it. Uh, yeah, so this game was made for uh, Game Boy Advance. Only it's only on Game Boy Advance, so yeah, it's a uh, not a lot of people will be able to play this game properly right, at the at the current day, and... Yeah, so this game was... The story is based on Suikoden 2, but there's some differences here. So, at the start, as we know, that there's a false flag attack on uh, the Unicorn Youth Brigade. And Ryo and Joey is trying to run away from the Highland soldiers. But, while running away, they found a cave in Tenter Pass where the Rune of Beginning is stored. So, there's already here one rather key differences compared to the actual story. So straight away from the start, they found the boat, the uh, Black Sword and Black Shield, without knowing what it is, before they even like meet Victor and Flick and all of that. And yeah, so this is basically the only Game Boy Advance in game in this series. It's not the only Nintendo game because uh, we have Switch Golden Tier credits for our, uh, Nintendo DS several years after this game was released, but yeah, this is the only GBA game of the series. I think th these are the period where like a lot of game franchises made uh, card game spin-offs of the of their IP, and so Suiko then tried that as well. Tried it as well, and they also made a physical version of this game as well. There's actually a physical trading card game of this. Oh, okay. The first battle is actually start, so time for me to actually show the battle. So again, this is a new game plus. So I already have like all the broken cards, all the very strong cards, and most of the battles in the early games gonna be really easy. So the way this game works, so people play missions and you have to try to win the missions to get the victory points or it stands for VP. So this mission requires 7 points and because uh, my deck is very OP, here I have Luca Blight, the strongest card ever in this game. I have 7 attack and could finish the mission straight away. You won't be able to do this if you just play the game normally at the start. But yeah, so yeah, this is just the start and the games are very easy. So yeah, the way it works, basically you play missions. And then you have to try to win the missions to get the victory points. And each game have like their own like PP requirements. That previous game just now, because it's just a start, I only need one VP, which makes it very quick to win. 
later the fights and you'll need more VPs and the game could uh, could be pretty long sometimes. Anyway, so story is a slack secret into you jump off the cliff in Tenzet Pass, but Joey actually stays. Uh, Joey actually stays on the Tenzet Pass to try to stall time for so that Rio could escape. So Joey got arrested straight away by the uh, by the Holland army instead of having to wait all the way until the new storyline. And we already saw Joey getting arrested straight away, and that means you know Joey is going to join Holland straight away. Anyway, so another story difference here. We go to Toto Village and we encounter Nanami in here straight away. We so we don't actually go back to Kiaro. We just uh, meet Nanami straight away in Toto Village. So basically, the story is like Nanami ran ran away after she heard the rumors that Joey and uh, Rio is, is a traitor, and she happened to meet Rio here. And then straight away from the start, we get to see El Renoil. Uh, straight away, we s we see that uh, Joey already joined the higher ranks of Highland Army straight away. And Joey hasn't even met Victor and Flick, so that's one of the differences in the story. Victor and Flick doesn't know who Joey is. They never meet met him. So... Soon now, this is uh, we found out that Highland Army is going to start attacking us, and so we have a choice. We could uh, we could try to join the Victor's and Flakes fight, or we could try to run away. So by running away, there's like one less battle to do, so it's quicker to run away here. Or the plan is for us to run away to Muse. So if we choose to fight, we'll have a duel against Flick, just like how it was in the original story. But by running away, so we try to run away, and then oh, hang on, Army name, guys. Army name. Any suggestions? Anyway, the story is that, yeah, so we try to run away, and then Ro Ro Raut encounters us in Toto Village. So he recognizes us and he's just trying to arrest us, so we're going to have a fight here. Hey, you then. Alright, there you go. Uh, Dread Optimist, that doesn't fit, unfortunately, like this. There's only uh, a character limit in the name. But the hey, you then fits, though. Hey, you then, Army. Alright, so the second story fight of this game. Uh, we'll need it from so, okay, again, so the, the way this game works, uh, we have to play missions and so, okay, so then we play the mission, which makes it easier for us. So, yeah, we play the mission and you see this one has a requirement to have 10 attack points. And whoever reach 10 first will w win the mission. And if I win this, I'll get two victory points straight away to finish the game. And now, this is again, this is New Game Plus. My characters are very strong straight away. I have very strong cards straight away, so yeah, the early game, the fights are gonna be really easy. And here you go, it just finishes instantly. So the story, uh, yeah, because uh, Route catches us, and yeah, we have to run away back to Mercenary Fortress. We can't run away to Muse. And we'll be hiding in the mercenary fortress while Victor and Flick is battling the Highland army. And we know from the original story, we know how that goes. The Highland army will completely beat Victor's army and attack the fortress. And whoa, whoa, whoa! Hang on. Uh, who's this Bahuin user? How dare he call me cheater? I'm gonna report him to the moderators. Anyway, yeah. So the Luca Blight attacks the fortress, and we got a couple of fights coming up. Ah, okay, good. So for all the previous fights, the opponent played the mission for us. I don't have to play mission. That actually makes it uh, quicker.
Okay, so again, you know, you fights have been very quick. Really. If I if I have played this properly instead of like trying to focus on commentary, I'll be on a good pace here. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, good. So I have a mission here. Uh, oh, what is this? Uh, okay. This is a funny mission that the opponents played. It's called cooking contest, and so funny thing is, the all your characters will only have one attack point in here. Doesn't matter that uh, all my good cards is ineffective here, cause uh, they're gonna their attack point is reduced to one. And the opponent has a high U, which gives an extra bonus for him. So I can't win this one. And I'll just let him win. Sometimes this game, that's how it goes. Sometimes there's some missions where it's easier to just let the opponent win. And you just play your own missions. Basically, as I'm bowing your crew, just let them cook. That, that's the stats for that mission earlier. And this mission, though, this is a big one. This is going to give me three VPs when I win it. And we'll instantly win the game. Although this mission requires 25 attack points. So I can't finish it in a... I can't finish it in one turn. Uh, actually, I can't even finish in two turns here. My cards aren't that good. Oh yeah, uh, if you notice, my decks have a lot of these like uh, Highland characters. Because uh, they're like kind of like the villains in this game and they're meant to be strong. They have like strong attack powers and so they're very good. And also some like late game characters as well in the game like uh, Pesmerga or a Star Dragon Sword isn't really late game but the Star Dragon Sword is also a strong card. And okay now the third battle of this uh, series. Uh, Luca found us and we're going to fight Luca directly. So with this fight we are actually supposed to lose. We don't need to win this one. So you see that we need so many VP points while the open only need one. And you know what? I'm just going to let him win this one. I'm just gonna finish this fight straight away. It's meant to be a very hard battle and... It's actually possible to win this one and you'll get some rare cards as a bonus if you do win this one. But again, this is a speed run. I want to be fast. So I'll just let him win this one quickly. So yeah, the mercenary fortress is taken down and we have to escape the muse. And for a new chapter. So the story in the muse kind of goes a similar way as uh, as how it was on the original story. So I think you guys will know what happened, right? To Annabelle. Anyway, to progress here, I need to get out to another city and come back to muse and we'll meet Victor. Oops, uh, there's a tutorial here. I could have skipped if I select no, but uh, I just smashed the button without thinking. But with the tutorial, you could uh, cancel the tutorial again after that. So it's not a big deal. Anyway, so Victor invites us to meet Annabelle. And Annabelle, again, just like the original story, Annabelle noticed that uh, me and uh, we, Rio and Anami, is, uh, are the Genkaku's children. Although, the difference here being that like, Joey isn't here, because Joey's still in Highland now. So, she doesn't get to meet Joey yet. Okay, now, here we have a choice to join Victor and Flick in this battle. But we could actually skip it. So, yeah, I selected the option not to join them, and yeah, we get to skip the battle. You remember in the Suikoden 2, we have this war battle against Gilbert and Highland army. So, that's kind of like the equivalent of this. But, in here, we could get to skip it. So it's time to meet Annabelle where we get to hear from her the, all this background story about Gengaku. But then suddenly we saw Joey going to the in the city. So 
I think you guys already know what Joey is trying to do, right? In this story. So Joey met Annabelle and they had a talk. Just a friendly chat. Press F to pay respects. So we saw that Annabelle is uh, about to fall asleep. And we also got the news that uh, Muse is under attack. So we have to run away. So coming up, there's three battles here. Okay, now this upcoming three battles, there's a secret strategy here that uh, speeds up the battle a lot. Yeah, we only found this like I only found this uh, like a couple of months ago. There's a funny strategy here. So uh, just now you see the PP got re requirement got reduced from three to one. So I had a card in here. Uh, it's still not visible here, but I had a card in this deck called uh, Escape from Muse. So it's a mission that uh, basically team uh, have a Muse team, Muse City team, and by placing that mission on my deck, it it gives a secret bonus and it reduces the PP requirement. So this was found by accident, <laughs> like uh, a couple of months ago, I think back in December. Oops. By uh, by a let's play streamer by the name of Sacrificial Jizo, he did like a kind of like a translation stream on Twitch, and yeah, uh, he actually found this while I was watching the the stream, and yeah, so it gives a new strats out of nowhere by accident. Like before, before, like on my old runs, like about three years ago, I I know a couple of other bonuses. For some other later fights, but I didn't know about this bonus in this chapter before. So I had to, on my old runs, I had to do this chapter kind of like the hard way. Have to get 3 VPs on all of this fight, and yeah, it makes the fight like at least 1 minute longer usually. So just by having this bonus, I probably speed up the run by like 3 minutes. Ah uh, yes, hyper aggressive, he's just very tired. Don't worry, uh, Annabelle will be fine. Anyway, this is actually a bit overkill. I only did one PP, but I played a mission that gives three PP. Although at the same time, uh, at the time I don't have any other cards in my deck, so my and my hand, so Mac is still just play that uh, huge mission. Same with this one. Okay, so this is the final fight this chapter, and again we still get the bonus. Ah, I should have taken out cool gun. That's a mistake. Hmm. This fight actually has some unique... Uh, he, the enemy has some unique cards. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna showcase a very, very funny trick here. So, he played Seed, and I have Cool Gun. Cool Gun has a bonus effect. So, if there's Seed on the battlefield, I get to trigger Cool Gun's ability, which... Oh, okay, that's funny. Uh, I, cool Gun was about to discard the enemy Seed, but he had Elza in his hand, which counters my Cool Gun's effect. And so now I'm... Okay, I'm actually screwed. Uh, I'm not sure I could win this. I just have to... And you have two very strong characters as well at the same time, which is actually very dangerous. Oh, okay, good. He doesn't have any cards. Okay, so nobody probably understand what happened just now, but that was a very, very, very dangerous situation that just happened just now. But I got lucky that I used Rina, so Rina have an effect which lets me discard a male character on the opponent side. So it's a very strong effect, and that's why I have Rina in my decks. And yeah, you see here the opponent also playing uh, Miku Miku. So this opponent deck is kind of unique. He have a lot of animal cards like the squirrels, the five squirrels, or the octopus abisboa. It's a rather unique deck actually. Anyway, so storyline. So we escape from Muse and we're going to bypass the bypass the lake to go to South Window. Aimbot. <laughs> So fortunately, in this part in Coronet, we don't have to be Taiho in this gambling game, just like in Suikoden 2. Uh, obviously, this is the part of the Suikoden 2 story that is very annoying for speedrunners, where you have to win the gamble against Taiho. But I don't have to do all of that though.
So we went to Couscous and gonna go to put the window. And so here we meet Victor and we meet Apple. So Apple straight away suggests to us that uh, we should recruit Shu to join us. This is a very very genius strategy. So yeah, we're going to go to Radat now. And try to convince Shu to join. So obviously at first Shu is reluctant to join. And okay, one difference from Sukuren 2, we actually got to see inside Shu's house here. So this is Shu's house that we never get to see in the actual game. Yeah. Now, uh, Shu wants us to prove uh, our strength to him, so we're going to do a battle against Shu. And okay, so this battle has a secret bonus as well, so if I have Richmond in my deck, the uh, shoe has this dialogue if I reach him in my deck and my VP requirement get reduced, so the battle gonna be faster as well. That's also another strategy that was only found like uh yeah a few months ago. So uh, after I tried to look into these secret bonus e even more. So Richmond is in my deck. Richmond is actually like a rather like kind of like crappy card. I put him in this deck just for this uh, bonus in this fight and. After this fight, I don't need Richmond anymore, I'm just going to remove it from my deck. Alright, so Shu, Shu's deck is kind of funny here. He's playing... So if you played uh, games like Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone, you might know this term called a meal, a meal deck. Basically a deck that tried to discard your deck so that you ran out of cards. So that's what uh, Shu is trying to do. This thing he's playing here is called a uh, teleport card. And if he managed to build this blinking mirror, uh, all of the cards in my hand gonna get discarded and yeah, gonna start to run out of cards. But yeah, I'm going to win the game before he managed to remove my deck though. And I'm just going to win this duel to get the one more PP to finish the game. So yeah, again, like if anyone played uh, collectible card games like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, yeah. so basically Shu is playing uh, what you call a meal deck. Anyway, we beat Shu and Shu decides to join us. Oh no, Joey is in Holland all this time! Surprise! So Julia is telling this Joey the backstory of the Beast Rune and how it feels uh, Lucas' anger. And it's gonna be built up to this for the story later. Oh, first of all... So... Earlier, I have like specific cards in my deck that I use just to reduce the feet, just to trigger some secret bonuses, like this escape from Muse. So, this triggers that secret bonus earlier in chapter 3, but it's actually a rather crap card, so I'm just going to take that out and put a better mission. Same with the Richmond that I used earlier, so, so this is Richmond. So, the card is kind of bad, zero attack. So, I'll take it out and I'll put. Rina. I'll put Rina. There you go, I think I two useless cards in my deck because, uh, yeah, I don't need them for the secret bonus anymore, so I could just remove them and act put actually good cards. So we get a story that uh, South Window is taken over by Haaland and we're gonna go to North Window. So we don't have to fight Neck Lord in North Window here. The castle is in here, the castle is already empty, so I guess they just want to speed up the story. And. Castle is empty, we're just gonna take it straight away and Shu come with us as well. So Shu told us the stra same strategy as in Suikoden 2, where Ryo is going to lead a few hundred soldiers to ambush the Solonji from the back. If you have Shu in, in your deck, which I did, see I have Shu, uh, you actually get a bit of bonus. 
the VP requirement for this specific battle gonna get reduced as well, so yeah, that's... This mission, okay, this mission is annoying, I think, yeah. Yeah, this is the mission where you can't play characters that have attacks bigger than two, and... Almost all of my cards have big attacks here, so I can't play anything in this mission. I'm just gonna let him win. Doesn't matter if you win this mission. And he's gonna win the game with my own mission anyway. Yeah, sometimes with this game, like if the opponent plays some weird missions that uh, is kind of annoying for you to win, it's easier to just ignore them, let them win, and then you just play your own mission. Okay, so the actual battle against Solonji. So this is where we finally get to see Solonji playing uh, military cards. Military missions, so... All this time we've been seeing uh, what you call an attack mission, but this is different, this is a military mission. So each character, they have this, uh, if you see Luca here, he has 7 attack and 2200 2, military points. So this, in here, like to win this one, you need to have like a... To a difference of bigger than your opponent of military points difference of like 2000 and it's a uh, it's kind of like a tough OR and it usually takes a lot of time to win and it usually wastes a lot of time if I actually try to win it so I never play military mission I'm just going to ignore it and most of the time I'm just going to ignore it and let him win just like what happened just now this military mission takes forever to finish usually Another military mission that, again, I think I'm just going to ignore this one, because it's, it's a waste of time, and we are, yeah, we're trying to speedrun this, and trying to play this military mission takes a long time. I just need to find my own missions, too. So yeah, as long as the opponent doesn't have enough PP to win the game, then that's fine. Doesn't matter if they win these missions. Okay, so that I have 3 VP out of 5 now, I'll probably only need one more mission to win this one. My own mission though, uh, I won't bother playing his military missions. There you go. Alright, simple. So yeah, story time here. Yeah, we beat Solonji just like in the original story and Solonji have to retreat. Although after this the story gonna change a bit for the next chapter. But yeah, for now, for this one, the story is kind of similar to Sukuren 2. And Ryo is going to be chosen as leader of the new Alliance army. Oh, we got to name our castle soon! Alright, chat, uh, castle name. Give some suggestions. Gaming castle, okay, there you go. Oh, but before that though, we have to hear uh, Victor t telling the background story of the Gengaku. So in Sikoden 2, you could actually skip this story, you could skip this flashback, but in here you can't, you have to hear Victor talking. <laughs> nice one, Owen Fifu. Oh, you just finished Sikoden for the first time! Congrats, how, uh, how do you like it?
Yeah, so if you have finished Sukuden 1, then I definitely recommend Sukuden 2. Oh, there's a tutorial here about facility card, but again, this is a speedrun, so we're just going to skip it. Okay, Gaming Castle. There you go. To be honest, the castle and the army name will, like, uh, you'll hardly be able to see it, because uh, the dialogue is gonna get skipped through. Yeah. Anyway, new chapter. So, this is, uh... Oh, sorry, all, all says official, a bit too late for that. But yeah, so this story is kinda different. Now, uh, we're going to take Big Two River, which has been occupied by Harlan. So, you know how that story in Sugoden 2 about the conflict between the humans, kobolds, swingers, and all that? You don't get to see it here. This is, uh, the Two River part of this is just very, very straightforward. You're just going to fight Seed, who is occupying the city. And after that, then yeah, we're just gonna take with the city. Also, another bit, uh, another secret bonus here. Uh, because our deck have this uh, mission called, oops. Because our deck has this mission called Take to River, it triggers a secret bonus in the spike, and our VP requirement get reduced from five to three. So, it also speeds up the, this fight a bit. Anyway, so this is the point in the game where the there's a kind of a difficulty spike actually. Opponent starts to play like the high quality Halen characters. And yeah, in the in the regular, if you play this regularly without like uh, the strong NG plus cards, this is the point where you suddenly see like a uh, oh, uh, rather huge difficulty spike and you might want to try grind for battle cards in the dungeons before actually tackling this part if you just play it regularly. But again, this is new game plus. I already have like very strong cards straight away, so I don't need to deal with it. Another military mission. Again, military mission takes forever to beat usually. And I'm just going to ignore it. Let him win this one. gonna do this duel to finish this game. We only need one more PP and the duel will provide this uh, one extra PP quickly. Just hope he doesn't have a 5 attack character though, because if he does, it's gonna be a waste of time. Okay, thank you. If you have another 5 attack character, this duel will be a draw and nobody will get a point, and which means I've just wasted my time. Alright, the second fight against Seed in this 2 river storyline. So yeah, this is the one battle where opponents start to have like uh, plenty of the uh, high qual high quality Halen characters, and yeah, if you try to play this game in the normal playthrough without uh, getting good cards for yourself, you're gonna struggle a lot. All right, gonna trigger Rina's ability here. Adult conversation. So that says uh, Rina's ability. What she will do is she will be able to discard a male character on the opponent side. That's so like a very very strong strong card because uh, it just lets you discard opponent card without it like with a very easy condition to fulfill. Oh, hang on. This is not something. I made a mistake. I should have played Luca. Okay, kinda annoying. I have to play Luca here to finish this mission, but Luca's gonna discard all characters in both players' hands. Sometimes it's a good thing, but sometimes it's a bit annoying as well, because I already have like a mission I want to play in my hand, but it got discarded, because I have to play Luca. Now I have to try to look for another mission, which I don't have yet, so... Oh, nice! Opponents played the mission for us. Thank you. Oh, this spell is also very good, though. Ooh, he started with a strong card. See, uh, like what I said earlier, the opponents in... This opponent has started to have, like, strong cards. Oh, he actually beats me! He have two strong Highland cards straight away and he actually beats me. That's kinda unlucky, but it's... I know it's not impossible in this fight. Now, this is... That is kinda annoying. I have to... Look for... Mission. My own mission. Which I don't have yet. Oh, okay, good. He placed that. For, uh, okay, should be able to win this one. Lick will have an attack bonus if I have Victor on the battlefield. 
So he normally only has 3 attack but he got boosted to 5 because uh, yeah, there's a combo with Victor. So we beat Seed and we take back 2 River. So yeah, the, sto the 2 River story here is uh, much much simpler and is uh, is very different compared to the original game. And the next part of this chapter is that we're going to take back South Window. So all this time, like even after we beat Solon G, so he actually still stays in South Window. He's still occupying that city and we're going to take it back from Solon G. So we're going to have like five, uh, no not five, four, four battles against him. So we're gonna be like a rather long series of battles here. The battle card actually I think is easier compared to the seed battle earlier, but yeah, it's gonna be quite a lot of battle. There's four battles to do. Any commissions. It is allness. It is so. Yeah, this game is uh is for in, in, made in Game Boy Advance, so obviously they have like a a huge technical limitation and what uh, how, what kind of graphics they could put for this game. It's kind of funny. Like, it's an uh, how do you say? It's a bit adorable. Like you see all of these uh, sequined two characters in like in little chibi forms. And yeah, I like the GB, the sound remixes as well. Like uh, it's a funny like was it eight? Is it eight or sixteen bit? I'm not sure, but yeah. It's a fun remix of this, of the, the soundtrack. There's a chance we might be able to hear the Necklord theme. The Necklord theme, uh, it's rare to, he to to be able to listen to it, but there's a chance we could do it, and it's a it's a fun one. Oh, I I'm still win it well. I actually used the wrong character. I should have used Thunder Dragon Sword there as a higher attack. Uh, okay, so this is a military mission. So military mission, it takes forever to do. And I'm just going to let him win this one. Not going to bother doing it. Trying to do military, trying to win military missions is uh, takes forever. Usually you can't, you won't be able to win to win a military mission in a single turn as well. Especially the big ones like this. With this one, it requires 4,000 military difference. So you you basically need to have four, uh. 4,000 meter points higher than your opponent. So the game gonna track for a long time and yeah, it's easier to just like ignore it, let the opponent win it. And it's gonna play my own mission. Okay, gonna trigger Arena's ability here even though we don't really need it, but we just have to because uh, we need to play Arena to, to get enough attack points to win it. Okay, two river mission, started mission. Uh, ooh, he played Valeria. Valeria is actually kind of unique. Like, Valeria will get buffed by three attack if there's a Highland op character on the opponent side. So, oh, okay, this is, this is not good. So, his Valeria right now is very, very strong. And if you have another strong card, I might actually lose this one because he followed it up by. Oh, I actually lost this one. Wow, he have a Luca Blade as well. That's really unlucky. And this is a this is a rather dangerous start. I bought this Valeria thinking I might I might still be fine doing that, but nope. Yeah, he have two strong cards to follow that. Oh, Necklord. Okay, this is a unique mission, DP Necklord. I'm just gonna play this music for a bit.
All right, that's it. <laughs> Time to continue the run. <laughs> so yeah, so this is this is a rather this is a uh, rare music to listen to because it only triggers if the opponent plays this uh, mission. They defeat Tech Lord, and I don't have this mission in my deck either, so yeah, you don't really see me playing this mission. It's actually a straightforward mission. It's a simple one. You just need 12 attack points to win, and uh, can I win this one? Yeah, it's a simple one. You need uh, 12 attack to win, and you just get one one PP from winning this one. So it's it's not that good of a mission to play actually. So uh, yeah, you only get one PP out of this, so you spend a long time just to get one PP. But yeah, if the opponent happened to play it, it triggers this uh, rare music. Oh, whoops. Uh, okay, this is funny. I think I've accidentally buffed his jaw, and that makes both of the players have 12 attack for that mission. And that mission ends up being a draw, and nobody gets a PP out of it. That was my bad. I actually could have played it differently to win that one. I made a mistake. I made a mistake with that one. Okay, now this is the Luca Luca Black Battle music here. That sometimes triggers if you play this beast room mission. Just gonna let the music play. Okay, you know what? This will play the King Contest music, I think. I'll let this music run for a bit. Yeah, so that mission, uh, cooking contest, is uh, it's slow to do. Like, uh, it makes so basically, it's it's kind of funny. Like, all the characters you played in that mission have only one attack, so you need the uh, five characters to win that one. So it takes a long time, and it only gives one VP as well. So at the moment, the opponent requires two VP to win the game, and if you get that one VP, that's fine. So I'll just let him win that mission. Uh, that kind of sucks. It gets you, and I have to discard the card because of it. I can't even win this one, no. I'm gonna let him win this one, I don't care about this mission. Okay, now I can't let the opponent win any more missions because he only need one more VP to win. So, whatever happens, I need to actually try. If he play some weird mission again, uh, like mini three missions, I have to try to stop him from winning it, even though that will lose me a lot of time. So, uh, the way this mission, this game has been done, it's been going kind of badly for me, for me to let this happen. And oh, just a single duel, and I could actually win this one. Okay, let's hope I'm finished as well. If I actually lose this duel, I lost the game, but I don't think he will be. I was about to say, I don't think he have characters higher than 5 attack, but he have Luca, and he beat me the duel, and he get the PP to win the game, so I actually lost. <laughs> this one is completely garbage, though. I mean, okay, I, I made mistakes in this game, throughout this game, though, so if, it, if I don't make the mistake, I wouldn't have lost. And if I had known he have, like, Luca, like multiple copies of Luca, I shouldn't play that duel, I could just play the regular mission, and I'll win the... But, uh, yeah, okay, I, I was messing around, and I got punished because of it. You know what, I could try to actually win this one. I have Rio, which will buff some of my characters. Ah, this is kinda rare, I'm actually going to win this cooking contest. Usually I won't bother. But, okay, Rio will buff the Alliance of Hearts by one attack. And yeah, that gives a lot of bonus for this mission, and yeah, just win it. I need another card. Okay, good.
<laughs> okay, again, opponent is playing Valeria, and Valeria will get buffed if the, the opponent set of a ha Island character. So, oh, uh, uh. this is actually dangerous. Not only a buff is Valeria, and his job is also. I lose this one. I think I'm losing this one. And you have to play this. Oh yeah, I lost this one. Uh, wait, hang on. He doesn't have any other character. No, okay. Yeah, I lost this one, whatever. Well, that's unlucky. Uh, I need another another mission. Okay, I think I'll try to win this cooking contest again. If I win this cooking contest, I'm going to win the game. I have okay, yeah, I have enough cards to characters to win this game as well. I have to play them one by one too. I have to play five characters to actually win this. Oh, hang up. Oh, never mind. I don't have to. I just remember I have Rio station on uh, the previous mission, so that will buff my alliance character permanently. I'm sure all of that doesn't make sense for the people here, but yeah. Okay, this is funny. I actually win the game by having two cooking contests. I never had that happen before. Usually I doesn't bother with uh, cooking contests because it's kind of annoying to do. Okay, seems like a straightforward start. I'm just going to play the Beast, beast Room mission. Enjoy the Luca Black Battle music. Ah, that's actually good. That mission is very straightforward and it gives me 2 VP as well. So if I play win both missions, I would get enough VP to win this game straight away. Thanks AI, that actually really helps. Ah, uh, that's annoying, he played Sai, so Sai will force me to discard one of my characters. Sai ability is also very strong. I had Sai as well in my hand, but he actually used it before I, I could do it, so... I can't play my own Sai as well now, which kinda sucks. Oh, hang on, do I not... Do I lose this one? I lost this one. I can't play any of my other two characters in my hand. Han, both Han and Sai is already on the board, so... Oh, yeah, you. Uh, yeah, okay. I need to finish this one, so... Before the opponent finishes it. Okay, phew. That was lucky that the opponent doesn't have any other characters to play. Because he was only one point of that winning that one. I don't need to win this one, because uh, I already have that Beast Rune mission uh, set up. Which is gonna give me 3 PP to finish the game, so I'll just ignore this one and let him play whatever. Okay, it's the final battle against Solonji. I want the mission cards. I didn't get one. I have to cycle through my deck if I don't have any. So I want to get them as soon as possible. Uh, military, again, so military mission takes forever to win usually. So normally I'm just going to ignore them. I should discard my hand as well because I can't play both of them. Mission? Damn it, this is unlucky. I've been cycling through a lot of cards in my deck and I still don't get my mission cards. And he played his military missions, which is kind of useless, so I'm just gonna ignore this and let him win it. I want to try, maybe I could actually win this mission. I have like a lot of good cards in my hand. But still, it takes kind of a long time usually, and yes, I don't think it's worth it. 
normally. Okay, there you go, it's one mission. Alright, one more mission and I should win this one. Uh, I already have a mission in my hand. Easy, simple. Okay, this game goes very smoothly. Unlike the previous one. Yeah, obviously it's a card game, so there's a lot of luck involved. Okay, we beat Solon G and we take back South Window. So now the next story part is uh, we it's kind of resemblance of the Secret Into Story, but it's also done in a very in a different order compared to how Secret Into Story works. So here we go back to the castle and we meet both Teresa and Sierra. So Teresa will gonna tell us the background story of Green Hill, how Green Hill got captured, and Sierra gonna tell the background story of Necklord. So we get to so yeah, we get to hear their background stories here. And we're going to help both of them. So we are going to help Teresa recapture Green Hill. And we're going to help Sierra be defeat Necklord in Tinto. So earlier we had Sierra talking about Necklord, and now we're going to uh, hear Teresa talking about how, uh, yeah, Green Hill got captured in the same way of how the it was done in Secret Into. Oops, we we'll go here and choose sleep. Hold on. So yeah, the Green Hill storyline is kind of similar to Secret Into, but it's done in a different order. Like we're going to recapture Green Hill uh, before the night raid or before we go to Matilda and all of that stuff. And yeah, so we can we have the choice there whether we have Green Hill or Tinto first, and because Green Hill is like the first choice, it's the default that we will pick if we just smash the button. Oops, I should just sleep there. So just before recapturing Green Hill, we're going to sleep in our bathroom, and I guess you guys could guess what's going to happen. So we are about to sleep, and then Lucia sneaks into our room, planning to kill us. And yeah, so we're going to have a battle with Lucia. Lucia is actually a pretty easy opponent, like uh, her cards are kind of weak. Yes, KF3, that's the storyline of this game. Kill you with the cards. I bet I saw she played this military mission as well, which... Oh, I don't try to beat it. You know what, I have some strong melee... Uh, yeah, you know what, that's good. I was thinking of trying to beat this one, but nah, it's still not worth it. It's going to drag one.
Uh, whoops. Okay, funny part that I... I can only... Uh, the only cards I'm available to play is Sasarai, but Sasarai has a strong ability where it lets you discard any cards on the battlefield. So normally you use it to remove your opponent's characters. But I opponent has a, don't have any cards yet earlier. And if I play Sasarai, I will be forced to discard one of my characters. Because there, there's no opponent cards to choose, and yeah, so it's gonna be useless to play Sasarai. Okay, just need one more TP. And there you go, we beat Lucia. So Lucia escapes, just like what happened in the Secret into storyline. Now, before we proceed, I'm going to edit my deck a bit. I'm going to put Teresa in my deck. Because having Teresa will trigger extra bonuses on the next two battles in the Green Hill storyline. So Teresa is actually like a rather useless card. It's crap. But it gives the secret bonus on the next two fights, which makes it very useful for the, just for these next two fights. And after we finish with the Green Hill storyline, I'm going to remove Teresa from my deck and put my other card. So before getting inside Green Hill, we're going to have a battle with Kugan and Seed. Straightforward battle, but the opponent does have a couple of strong cards because uh, they have like some of the strong hard cards. There you go. Having Teresa in the deck will trigger that dialogue, which uh, reduces the PP requirement from five to three. So it probably save. It usually save about the save time by like about a minute by doing that, and it makes the fight safer as well because uh, yeah, you need less PP to win this one. Ah, funny thing, opponent have Uber and I have Pesmerga, and the Pesmerga is super strong there. Uh, it got buffed into by four attack, so it got buffed from like five attack to nine attack, just from a single card. It's a bit overkill, but yeah. Okay, one more mission. Ah, uh, it's a military mission again. Military missions are usually slow to do, so I'm just going to ignore this one. Okay, funny thing. He has seed and I use cool gun. Cool gun will trigger an extra ability if there's seed on the battlefield, which allows me to discard a card and I use it to discard his own seed. Isn't Kiba always bold? Yeah, you're going to see Kiba's picture in this mission a lot because uh, this capture to river mission is a very, very reliable mission. Gives me uh, 2 PP by winning it. So I have like a lot of it in my deck. Okay, again, having Teresa there will trigger the secret bonus that uh, reduces the PP requirement. I need the mission cards. Could just do well, I guess, with Luca. The duel is a unique mission, like uh, both characters will play one ca character and the attack value will be covered. Ooh, Luca versus Taki, an old woman. A very fair match matchup there, a very fair duel. And yeah, so the attack point is going to get compared and whoever has the highest will be will win that mission. It's a quick way to get one extra PP. So you only need to play one character. And again, a military mission takes forever, so I'm just going to leave it. And Bao and that grandma is very brave, like she takes on Luca Black by herself. 
Press F to pay respects to Taki, who have to like look up like by herself. Also, because I have Luca stationed in my previous mission, I can't play my second copy of Luca there, so I'm just gonna discard it. And also, I'm going to discard my cards to get a mission. Ah, uh, okay, this is this is annoying. So this is a very very long military battles. It gives very high amount of uh, military points, but it also oh, that's very lucky. Okay, okay. Oh, I, this opponent doesn't have any. I okay. I guess I played my hand and opponent have. Han in his deck, which he can't play anymore because I have Han. I played my Han. So I end up getting this mission for free. That is like very, very lucky. Normally it takes forever to get that one. But yeah, I'm, for some reason the opponent can't play any characters on the turn. So I win it for free. Anyway, now, uh, yeah, so just like Secure into Storyland, we're going to sneak inside the Green Hill City from the forest. And there's a small dungeon here, we could get some extra chests to get extra cards, but we don't need that because we already have like so many strong cards in the NG plus save pile. And in the middle of the forest, we meet uh, Lucia. So, second fight against her. This time, there's the, the VP requirement is like one point higher compared to the previous one. Previous one, you need five, and this time, you need six. But the fight is still pretty easy overall. Ah, oh, Teresa in my hand, that's actually annoying. Teresa is, uh, is a weak card. She only gives like, she only gives zero attack actually. <laughs> so she, she's kind of like, use pointless, but... I put her in her deck just to trigger the secret bonus on the two previous two missions. She's not completely useless though, if I play her, it will draw another card, so I could get another character that I could actually play. Hopefully. This one, okay. But it's still a weak card overall because yeah, it's just a waste of time playing Teresa, like you play it and you only get zero attack. Yes, Mbahu and Taki is better than Paul, that's true. She she lasts longer in the duel. Uh I think it's actually kinda of pointless to play B soon here. The uh, playing B soon as uh one finish with the game there. How popular? Not that popular on so yeah, this game, yeah, the sales isn't that good. And that's probably one reason why they didn't bother translating this uh, to English. So, okay, there's background story behind this game. This game, they they had actually... They actually have a plan to use this game to have Suikoden 3 promotional content as well. There's a Suikoden 3 secret character that they, they're going to... Let you unlock at the end of, near the end of this game. So they, they're going to have a special version of this game with this uh, secret Suikoden 3 character unlock. But because this game wasn't popular, they didn't bother to create this uh, special version. And in the original game, you, they disabled the secret. But this this translation patch actually modded the game to unlock that secret student three character. Hey chat, anyone can guess what this uh, secret entry character is? That is like uh, a secret in this game. It's not Nash, because. Uh, Nash, Nash is actually in this game as well. Nash, the Suikoden, Suikoden Gaiden version of Nash is actually in this game. It's a normal character, it's a normal card in this game, but uh... Yeah, it's, it's not Nash, so there's a... Uh, not Ace. So there, there is a special Suikoden 3 character that uh, got featured in this game. You can only unlock them uh, uh, near, very near the end once you already reach Elden Noel. Not Gedo, not Gedo. So yeah, so no, nobody have guessed it right yet. Anyway, the story time is that, yeah, so we take back Green Hill, there's a riot from by the Green Hill citizens to pick up the Harlan army. And we actually get to meet Joey for a bit as well. Nope, onward, not Gilam. I wish it was Gilam, it was my, it's everyone's favorite, including mine as well. But nope, it's not Gilam. Okay, I'll give you a hint. It, the character is from Grassland. That's my one hint. It's a it's it's a character from Grasslands. Now, yeah, story-wise, we recapture Green Hill and yeah, maybe actually near 
the end of this run, like I could I could actually showcase that uh special character if you guys want to. So you need to reach the near the end to access him. No to go, yep, there you go, KF Crispy. You get right. Yeah, you guess it right. Hey Surayana, welcome. Okay, now that we recapture Green Hill, it's time to help Teresa. And uh, no, I mean yeah, it's not not Teresa, I mean it's time to help uh who is it again? Sierra, right, yeah. But before that though, we're going to edit the deck a bit. So I don't need Teresa anymore, so I'm just going to remove her and remove her from the deck and put back in Cool Gun, which is an actually useful card. And I'm going to head to Pinto now. Yeah, okay, I guess the plan is like he's some, he's some sort of mascot character. So the story, like Necklord story run is very short here. We're just going to... Necklord already took over Tinto straight away and we're just going to sneak into Tinto from the mines to reach him directly. So this chapter and the Necklord storyline only have one fight. This is gonna fight Necklord directly. Only on one fight. So it's a very fast chapter. I should I should do that on one for the next cotton. Uh yeah, thanks for the reminder. I should do that for the next uh <laughs> I should do that for the next cotton. Uh yeah, so this necklord fight it's only one, but it's supposed to be like a long fight because you need 8 PP. But I have Star Dragon Sword in my deck and it gives a secret bonus. So the PP requirement gets reduced from 8 from uh 8 to 3, which makes it a lot shorter than what it's intended to be. It's gonna play oh actually he has a lot of necklord card. Necklord could actually be Keely. Oh, okay, good, it doesn't play any card. Yeah, so this fight turns from a what's supposed to be long fight into a short fight, and it is a... Uh, facility, do I want to bother destroying it? Uh, I think I'll just destroy it. Actually, I don't even have enough cards to win my mission anyway. Okay, I'll just blow this up. So, facility, uh, the way it works, if the opponent manages to build it, he will get a permanent bonus based on what facility was built. I think that was a blacksmith, and I think it, I don't I don't remember what bonus is. But yeah, it, it if he builds a facility, he get a permanent bonus, and he also get half PP. So building two facilities give you one PP, but uh, it's a it's a very slow way of trying to gaining victory point, and it's like uh, it's yeah, it's slow to do, and it's not really effective in general. So I never bothered using it in my own deck. Whoa, 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 okay, crispy. Don't, 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 don't spill the insider secret. Damn it, uh, I was one point off. I don't have enough, uh, that points for that one. There you go, I win this tech fight. Not the fastest, but it's still pretty fast, I guess. Okay, so yeah, we beat Netlord and Tinto is John now joins us and time for the next part of the storyline. So this storyline, all this time, Couscous is actually still under Highland control. Iba is controlling Couscous at the moment. And yeah, we want to take it back. So this the way story the this Kiba storyline goes, it goes kind of a similar way in Sukuden 2. But the difference is that like this is the rather the I mean the Kiba story is done. Oops, uh, actually a bit of dialogue mystic there. Should have choose second option, but yeah. The storyline order is different. Like uh, before we beat so in the secret in two, we beat Kiba before we go to Green before we capture Green Hill or we beat Necklord, right? And in this one we only start to beat Kiba after doing both Green Hill and Tinto. So the storyline order in this uh, game is kind of mixed around compared to Compared to Sukuden 2. And Route is here as well, just like how it does in Sukuden 2, where the Route is uh, supposedly aiding Kiba. Okay, 
Okay, so first we're gonna fight Crowd. Actually, on my old world record, I actually lost this fight, so I shouldn't underestimate this fight. Yeah, I need 5 VP, so this game is uh, it's not short. playing Luka but I could actually win this without Luka so maybe I'll keep the Luka for next turn. Oh beast room nice. Uh, Alright military mission again it's usually slow so I'm just going to ignore this one. He gave the Ridley and Boris combo. Father and son combo. I don't think they actually have any synergy with each other in their actual effects, but uh, uh, it's just kind of funny they happen to play that both together. Uh, I don't have that much cards here. That's fine, though. Luka has this very unique effect where both players will discard their hand completely when anyone plays Luka. Uh, again, another military machine. This one is actually a short one. It only requires 1,500 military. Uh, you know what? I have duplicate Rios. I can't play both of them at the same time next turn, so I might as well just play one of them to get rid of it from my hand and help cycle to my deck. Well, I'm just going to let him win this one though. It doesn't, I don't care about the actual mission. Yeah, Sai has this uh, rather unique ability, so if uh, there's two characters in my side that have uh, military points, then if the open plays Sai, then I have to discard one of these military characters on my side. So, yeah, I, I get to choose who to discard, though, so I could at least discard my lowest attack character, but it's still annoying that uh, yeah, I have to slow down this game. And if I don't, if he doesn't play Sai, I could have win this mission here in this, uh, in this turn. But that one discard actually like slows down this down down this game. And so here we get to witness the wedding between Joey and Julia. As you guys know, this is a very happy wedding between uh, involving our childhood friend. So yeah, let us say congrats to our childhood friend Joey and the Holland Princess uh, Julia in this uh, very happy wedding. Okay, so first we're gonna fight Klaus, and after that we're going to fight Kiba. So again, both of them are gonna be kind of long fight, because uh, the VP requirement is kind of huge. They're still not that hard of fights, but uh, usually they're not that hard. Although they do have some strong characters like this one, so I still have to be careful. I don't really need so Sasara's effect let me discard an opponent's card here. I don't actually really need this one because the opponent doesn't have 
anything dangerous because uh, he can't play any other character but it's actually annoying he actually played Gijimu and Gijimu will increase the VP the attack point requirement for this mission but, and I was playing Sasara just uh, just to boost the attack point but oh well Characters. Oh, this one gonna be give me two points if I win this one. I think. Okay, good. Okay, this is a straightforward mission, and gonna give me two points if I win it. So it's actually very, very lucky that the uh, opponent plays this for me. As long as he doesn't have a Luca Blight, because if you have a Luca Blight, then he will actually win this mission straight away. But uh, okay, I don't think this, this guy have it. Should I click Alzheimer's and Valeria? Slight mistake there. Oh well, I won't win this, I won't finish this fight in a turn, because uh, if I play Luka, then all my hand gonna get discarded, and yeah, and I have to wait for the next turn, that's fine, uh, I guess I'll just use Luka to cycle through my deck as well. Okay, gonna show this Unite here, so some character combos have a Unite, so if I play Joey, Oh, I just said I only win, win this one. I don't need, need the unit, but hey, if I play Joey, I have Nanami in my hand as well, and I could play Nanami straight away at the same time. So that's useful because uh, yeah, it it get it lets me get uh, the attack point faster by playing two characters at once straight away. Uh, I need missions, actual good missions. I don't think Duel will do much in this mission. In this game. Thank you, opponent, for playing this one. It's actually, it's a rather easy way to get. So, this card, uh, whoever's playing, I should use one. Eh. So, the one who played this card, which is the opponent, will only get one VP if they if they win it. But the the one, who, their opponent, which is me, will get two VP if if if, uh, if I win it. So it's a very very good card to face if it's the opponent who play it. But it's not worth it to put in my deck because he. Ah, that sucks. Uh, okay, now this is not good. Okay, ignore whatever my rambling about that uh, capture point mission. I have to focus on the mission which I am losing very badly. If I just and try to discard my Rio again. Okay, that works. Phew. Uh, I still need one more PP though. Okay, this game is still going smooth so far. Uh, yeah. I can't play my hand because I already stationed it on uh, my previous mission. But that's fine, I still have un enough other cards to play with. Uh, Bolgar is actually a rather strong card in this game. Uh, he has uh, 3 PP. It's like one of the cards that you get earlier in the game as well, so it's a useful card. Uh, this isn't good. It's three or three of one winning. Uh, did he win this one? Yep, he does. That sucks. Uh, well, that's unlucky. I mean, I still haven't lost the game though, but yeah, it's gonna slow down quite a lot. If I win that one, I would have finished this game. Uh, all right, since he played this, uh, yeah, make this do this then. I can't finish this mission in one turn, this, this is the beast mission which requires 25 TP, which is like very high. And I won't be able to finish this in one turn, but that's fine, it's gonna finish this in the turn out of this. Uh, that's not good, is the opponent actually hit? High enough, but I have Valeria now. So my Valeria got buffed. Because a Valeria will get buffed when there's an Highland character on the opponent side. 
Yeah, I can play Luca to finish this. Good. Okay, this game has some awkward moments, but it still it still went all right. It's not the best though. There's that one mission that I actually lost, which makes it kind of slow. And we beat Kiba, and just like in Sukoden 2, uh, we tried to convince Kiba to join. At first, he doesn't want to, but then he heard the news of how Agares got assassinated by Luca. That convinces him to join us instead. Okay, so all this time, we haven't actually went to Matilda at all. And it takes us this this long for us to start to go to Matilda. So this is like the second last chapter of this game, and finally we went to Matilda after all this time, after like we've recaptured all of the other places. Unlike in Sikuden 2 where we go to Matilda at the middle of the game before we start to recapturing the other cities. Now it takes us uh, this long for us to go to Matilda. Yes, Fuzi, I yeah, recommend this if you like Sikuden 2. It's, it's funny to see like how these uh, yeah, Sikuden 2 characters are uh, transformed into cards. Like, well, this game, the gameplay isn't the best. Like, it's pretty fun. Like, I think the game mechanics are kind of interesting. But at the same time, I think this has some balance issues. Like, there's a lot of cards with interesting effects, but their stats are weak. So it makes it kind of pointless to play them. But at the same time, yeah, if you just are a Sikuden fan, it's funny to see all of these uh, characters turn into cards. And to see the sequel into story got transformed in a different way as well. As I was saying, so this game is... So, again, this is similar to Sikuren 2 storyline. The Matilda storyline here again is similar. You meet Gurudo, but Gurudo refused to join us. And then we went with Miklotov to check out Muse. And all of that. But the, 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 the story in order is kind of like... It's kind of mixed up. They jumble it up and makes it uh, quite a lot different compared to Sikuren 2. Now this game, when you just started the game, normally like uh, you don't have that much cards to play yet, so it's not hard to build the deck when the start, but at the same time like, you kind of limit it as well, because once you realize that uh, your starting guys are kind of weak, then you'll start to having to go to the dungeons, grind for big, stronger cards and all. But yeah, again, like, it's still fun to play with though, as a super and fun. Yeah. So yeah, story time, we went to, to make a lot of the Muse, and we witnessed how Luca sacrificed the Muse citizens to the Beast Rune. So again, so the, the way this goes is similar to how it goes in Sikorin 2. There's actually, oh Fuzi, there's actually a, a physical version of this card game as well. They have like a packs for Sikorin 1, Sikorin 3, and Sikorin 4. So if you're into like collecting trading card games, there's actually you could still try to buy some of these collections. Some of them might still be sold on like online stores, like Amazon or eBay. I'm not sure, but yeah. And yeah, they they, they actually made the physical version of this all the way to Sukoden Four, but I guess they stopped after that. So there's no sets for Sukoden Five. The feed this video game is only only covers Sukoden Two, but yeah. Yeah, you could try to Google it. Uh, I think in Suicode and Fandom Wiki, they have like uh, quite a lot of the most of the most, if not maybe all of the pictures of these cards. Like all the worst sets from like the Suicode and 3, Suicode and 4. I think uh, the Lazlo, the main character of Suicode and 4, have like the he, one of his version of the cards have like a new costume. Like kind of like a more like a royal costume, I guess, as a commander instead of just his casual costume. Okay, do well, and I will win this battle. Okay, good. This game went very smooth. Oops.
So yeah, just like in Suikoden 2, Mikoto got angry and he wants to tell Gorudo about the atrocities that has been happening in Muse. But Gorudo still refused to help the city-states. And so again, Miklotov and Kamos decides to defect and joins us. Now, a bit of dungeon here where uh, in the Matilda Forest, there's some extra chests you could pick to get extra cards, but we don't need that because uh, we already have like all of the super good cards. So, and when we finally reach back to Green Hill, then uh, Kamus brings his army to us. Oops, I accidentally went here. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's rare by this point because it's like very old, but. I think there might be still be people selling it on online stores. Second hand, I'm not sure. Okay. Now, this part of the Matilda storyline now is changing from the original story. So, basically, Matilda signs a peace treaty with Highland. And instead of waiting, we just decides to attack Matilda directly before they their alliance start to get stronger. So, we're going to attack Matilda and we're gonna have some fights against these uh, Matilda knights. We have Miklotov on our deck. And Miklotov will give extra bonuses on this fight, so you see that VP requirement get reduced from 5 to 3. So yeah, that's an extra bonus if we have Miklotov in this uh, in this deck. And Miklotov itself is also a decent card, it has 3 attacks, which is why I have Miklotov in this deck. Just one copy of it all this time. Oh, $15 a card, okay, that actually sounds expensive. Then again, it's like, yeah, it's a rare collectible item. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't really know what's the price, but I think there are still people selling it. I think back in those days, uh, the Japanese uh, video games, like, they, they make uh, card, collectible card games of all kinds of franchises. Okay, so I guess Konami tried to do it with Sukoden as well. Victor card is strong. Look! Look, I think it actually might not be that strong. It's Luke's effect is useful in uh, melee trip. Ah, it sucks. Ah, he played a facility and it's faster for me to just blow it up. So if I try to let him build it, it's still just gonna crack the game. Yeah, Luke is actually the stats is not that good, but I guess it, his effect is unique too. It's still a fun card to collect. Man, that sucks. I can't play my Aleria just like this. Uh, can I even win this one? I can't, do I? Uh, yeah, because I... I can't win this one because I can't play my Valeria. So, you have to play this Valeria first. And yeah, you can have the two same characters on the battlefield at the same time. So I can't play my Valeria, unfortunately. They do have a look of Black Heart. Yes, it's a very strong effect. Very, very strong effect. Uh, military missions, it's slow, I'm just going to ignore it. Yes, they do have a look of black card. I guess it's it's probably like one of the rarer cards because it's like has the Luka Black has the second highest attack point in this game. The highest attack point is Abyss Boa. Whoa, Pest Murga. Uh, this is actually dangerous. Ah, I could use this. Ah, this is funny, he's like that. Okay, like not epic is annoying. I think what was it again? He will just she will just like Yeah re reshuffle out of my hand, so I'm gonna have new cards in this turn. Okay, I could still win this one particularly. And so we're gonna attack the Matilda castle. 
It's not that the uh, attack on Metal Dark Castle is not going to be as fancy as how it goes in Skuren 2. It's gonna be like a straightforward battle, so this is gonna fight these armies and then the uh, at the end we're gonna fight Gurudo on a card battle. Uh so I I'm so before I play this Before I play this game there is like one like uh there's this one random online game that happened to have like a card mini game as well. And I actually have like a high win rate on that card game and I actually get, get rich in this online game by doing that card game. It's a very obscure online game, nobody here will know. But a couple of months after I played this, back in 2013, I started to play Hearthstone. So Hearthstone is, you know, is, uh, is the popular uh, Warcraft based political card game. And um, before I played Hearthstone, I realized that, oh, turns out I like card games based on me playing this and such. So I played Hearthstone and I ended up playing Hearthstone a lot. And actually, before I speedrun any of these recurrent games, I've my first speedruns are from Hearthstone. So I'm very familiar with like card games before I started speedrunning this. So I kind of like familiar with like card game concepts in general and like the strategies that you do to uh, tackle card games. Like for example, oh, if the if you need more cards, you could like discard your cards, some of your hands to cycle through your deck and stuff like that. That's the kind of concept that uh, card game players will be very familiar with. And yeah, I'm familiar with those, and they w which makes it easy for me to set up this speedrun. So I already know how, how card game works in general. So <laughs> finally Hearthstone, that's like a long... free smith is like a long, long time ago. So yeah, if you, if you look at my channel, like... Most of my content is from doing these uh, Hearthstone speedruns of the solo adventures. It's actually kind of like my claim to fame. I I actually go to Gamestun... I went to Gamestun Quick last year, TDQ, to showcase one of these Hearthstone speedruns. And it made some highlights on the Hearthstone community, and anyway, yeah. funny story, and yeah, anyway, that, that's my main cling to fame, really, by doing Hearthstone speedruns. I've been told, like, Hearthstone is, like, far, it's definitely not uh, nowhere near as famous as how it was several years ago, but, so, yeah, w right now, what my heart, so, uh, it's gonna play one, so, yeah, I'm just gonna play this video to discard my own this video. But me Military missions just sucks to do though, it's slow, so I'm not going to borrow in this one. But yeah, back to the topic of Hearthstone, basically yeah, I'm very familiar with card games when I try to speedrun and this is the first time. So it makes it easy for me to set up this speedrun. I already know like how card games work in general and... Yeah, I know what kind of strategies you do when you try to tackle a card game. Not 50, it's more like... Uh... I think right now I have like, kind of about 5 Hearthstone old record I think. Ah, thanks, uh, for tweeting that. Bowen. Damn it, can't play my Sandrigan Sword. Uh, okay, I could still win this one. I mean, okay, the way this game play, this plays is very different to Hearthstone, of course, but... There's still some concept that is like, uh... Kind of like you can, kind of makes you understand this game. Uh, if you know card games, they're like draw card draws in general. Of course, card draw is a good thing. And with this stack, it's unlike Hearthstone. Like uh, you don't, uh, you, you, the game will give you six cards in your hand all the time. So yeah, you don't really need to care about card draw resources. So the way you draw cards is by discarding your hand, really. If you don't have the cards you want in your hand, you just discard a bunch of them and that lets you cycle through your deck. You know, things like that. So what I mentioned just now, like, people who know card games will probably understand quickly, but people who doesn't know card games will... You know, probably doesn't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, back to the story. So this is the final fight against Gorudo. So you know this whole story in Suikoden 2 where Nanami got uh, injured at the end of Rock-X Castle and Joey also comes to try to faces and all of that stuff, it doesn't happen in this one. It's just gonna be a straightforward battle against Gorudo. So his deck is kind of unique. So his deck only have uh, cards that uh, you can kind of consider a factionless. So every character in this game, they have a faction. And there are some that is considered like factionless, like no faction at all. I think it's called... The translation called it's an in the... Uh, translation called, called them as independent and yeah so 
He played all of these independent cards, like all of the Matilda related cards, Tinto related cards, and all of these characters like Bob or Adlai that doesn't have like an actual faction in it. <laughs> maiden, not maidenless. Okay, that, uh, I mean factionless, not maiden. Okay, the way my English action, uh, my English accent, like uh, make that sounds funny, but uh, I went to say factionless, not maidenless. Hey, I'm a squirrel, so yeah, this is this is definitely a rather unique game. So if you're into Suiko, then yeah, definitely try to recommend check this game out once. It's a funny way of showcasing the Suiko into characters as a card, as cards. And you also get to see them like their chibi version of them in the in the battle. It does, yeah. Like a lot of people still there's so many Suikoden fans out there that still doesn't realize that this game is exists. And I think if they see this game, it's yeah, it's gonna be funny nostalgia. I need missions. There you go. And why? Can I? Nah, you know what? Yeah, playing. Okay, finishing this mission gives me only one PP. Well, I need two PP to win, so it's kind of pointless if, if I try to do this one. Ah. Oops, uh, that's a mistake. I accidentally play Han. I don't need to do it actually. I just let him win this one. Yeah. So this this game is based on Suikoden 2. So it's. Yeah, almost all of the characters are from Suikoden 2. There's small cameos from Suikoden 1, like there's Tear McDoll. Well, Tear McDoll is in Suikoden 2 as well, I guess, yeah. But yeah, all the characters here are basically from the Suikoden 2. And there's a small secret. Near the end of the game, there's a secret Suikoden 3 character that you could, uh, you could recruit. I might show it later. Oh no, oh no, I made a mistake, I don't have the links for this. Uh, oh no, I made a mistake, I may actually lose this one. Okay, I don't think... Okay, shoot. That's a stupid mistake. Ah, damn it, I don't have the links to play. So there's a game mechanic that I haven't explained all this time. There's a mechanic called links. So each... Uh, okay. So to be able to play a character, you need to have the character shares a link with uh, another character that's already on your battlefield. And the previous turn, when I play my cool gun, the other characters in my hand doesn't have the same link as cool gun. So I can't play any of them. Which kind of screws me up and yeah, I made a mistake there. Unfortunately, the opponent doesn't have a character, enough characters to win this mission as well, so... Uh, yeah. Anyway, we beat Gorudo and there you go. Uh... By tactics, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean like the military battle? Or the... Or... So... There's actually a mission type called the military battles, but they are slow to do and usually I never played them in my deck. And if I saw an opponent playing military battle, what I do usually is just, I just gonna let him win. Let them win because uh, it's slow to do and it's gonna let them win. And it's gonna ignore the military battle split might be open usually. Oh, Spikoden and Tactics? Oh, no, no, okay, okay. Spikoden and Tactics, okay, sorry, I missed another question. Spikoden and Tactics is a completely different game. It's it's like a sequel to Spikoden 4. So it doesn't really have anything to do with the other Spikoden. It's yeah, it's a continuation of Spikoden 4. Spikoden 4 itself is like, it's a... Uh, the story... Oops. Uh, mistake. Suikoden 4 itself, the the story is like, it's set at like 150 years before Suikoden 1 storyline, so it's like a very distant time period, and it's like very, very different from the other Suikodens. So yeah, both Suikoden 4 and Tactics, uh, it's very, very different compared to... Uh, how is it? Compared to Suikoden 1, 2, or 3, or 5. Story-wise. Yeah, I think not a lot of people have played Suikoden and Tactics as well, which is, yeah, so... Yeah, I understand that, like, actually, yeah, not a lot of people have played Suikoden and Tactics in general. It's actually a fun game, though. I enjoy it, like, I think there are flaws, but it's still a, a fun strategy RPG game. Anyway, so this is the final chapter. We're going to attack Elinor. And there's, like, eight battles to do in a row. We're going to... From now on, like, the characters have strong cards most of the time. So I definitely have to be careful here.
So you should straight away. Okay, I'm going to trigger a unique. So, okay. Cool gun have this special ability called critical. It got triggered if seed is on the battlefield. Even for this case, the seed is on the opponent's side. And this ability lets me to discard a character. And I use it to discard his own seed. It's kind of like what's that, uh, what that saying called like the snake bites its tail. Yeah, like uh, his own seed ends up uh, betraying him by triggering my Kugan's ability. Not sure if that makes sense at all or not, but yeah. It's just like a funny interaction that happens sometimes whenever an opponent has a Kugan. And whenever an opponent has seed. And this is a military battle, so I'm not really going to bother dragging this on, but I have multiple copies of Rio, so I'm just going to play one of them so that my Rio get discarded. And I could cycle it through for a more useful card in the next turn. Uh, actually, slight spoilers, but Suikoden 4 does showcase that. So Suikoden 4 is like 150 years before Suikoden 1, right? But it does showcase that, because that is, uh, well, that is immortal, basically. He's like... He's already born like 300 years before Suikoden 1, so he's still alive during Suikoden 4, and you get to see a bit of extra storyline with that. And Sugar and Ford. <laughs> and okay, so this is a military battle. Normally, I don't really want to do this, but if if the opponent wins this one, he'll get uh, three VPs, and they're gonna win him the game. So I'm going to lose if I if I don't try to stop him from winning this one. I probably wouldn't bother like actually finishing this military battle because uh, it takes forever. So I'm just going to play my own missions, and I hope the opponent doesn't drag me a lot with that uh, military battle. Yeah, there's some there's some interesting story, extra storyline about that on Suikoden 4, definitely. If you're not good. I have to discard his seed. Okay, he played his seed, so I can't play my seed anymore. But I have Sasarai, which lets me discard an, an enemy character. So I'll try to discard his character seed, and I hope he doesn't have a second copy of seed. Okay, good. Uh, now I can play my seed and finish this mission. Good. Uh, I want to duel. I don't think so, so okay, some, the, the opponent here have a Luka Blight sometimes, and if I play a duel, decent chance he have a Luka Blight and he will beat me. But it's not safe, even though if I play, if I win the duel straight away, I'll get that one. Ooh. Whoops, I forgot I can't play Joey. Joey is stationed already. Yeah, I still have characters to play though at least, so I can still win this next turn. Okay, good. Actually, it's a good thing he played Luca there, because uh, if he the, playing Luca will discard uh, all the cards in both player hands, and that will finish the turn straight away and make him stop dragging the military mission further. And let's me play my own mission straight away here. Okay, not the passes five, but it works, I guess. Uh, I want my mission cards. Okay, there you go. Alright, another military mission, which again, military missions are slow to do, so normally I'm just going to ignore them. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna play Luca. Nah, no, actually. Uh, if he stationed cool gun, yeah, I won't be able to play my cool gun. That's fine though. Let's do this one. Uh, I need to cross. I need permission. 
Alright, to avoid him from dragging this military mission, I'm just gonna play Luca. And that will also cycle through my hand, because I discard all of the cards in my hand straight away. Which is actually helpful. So I want to get my own mission. Uh... I get you. Well, I can't let him win this one, so I still have to try to click through this anyway. Yeah, I can't let him win this military mission because it will give him enough VP to win the game. So I still have to try to stop the opponent from winning. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Nice, nice. Uh, I could actually win this one. Because I have all... I have the strong military cards. I don't need an army. Okay, yeah, Shu has a very strong effect in military battles. It's at the... At the conclusion of his military battle, I could like put uh, one of his uh, opponent cards back into his hand. And that will reduce his military point. And let's win the game. Okay, that actually very helpful because that mission gives a lot of EP straight away. It's rare for no, it's normally rare for me to bother winning a military mission, but once in a while that could happen if you got lucky and you have the right cards in your hand. Okay, now this is a fight against Luca Blight. It's actually a rather hard fight, and you need a lot of EP to win. You need seven, while the opponent can only needs three. Can I win this one? Don't think I have enough cards to win this one, whatever. I have Sasarai to stop him from winning anyway, in case he has strong cards. Sasarai lets me discard an enemy character. Ah, the Gilia actually buffs my Halen character, so it might actually let me win this one. Oh, never mind. That sucks. Okay, I'm still ahead on the mission, so I'm fine. Another funny instance of me using cool gun to discard his own seed. The school gun's ability could get triggered if the seed on the battlefield. Even if it's the seed is an opponent side, so I use it to discard his own seed. I could try with the Pasmurga, I guess. I think there's a decent chance. It's Pasmurga to pop attack character. And after the duel, if I win it, then I could finish the game with my Turi. Yep, Abyssboa. Okay, Abyssboa is like the strongest attack character there. Tavern attack character. Oh well. Uh, that kinda sucks. Uh, that's fine. Still far away from me. Uh... I guess it's a rather slow fight, but whatever, it still works out. And now this sucks, I can't play my own seat. You see, I already played his seat before. Although, I could use Sai to this. Uh, I... He will pro life. Uh, yeah. I won't be able to use Sai to discard seat. He will probably discard the U, but uh, what the hell? And this is dangerous. Okay, I still want to use Sai just to force him to discard the card. And prevent him from winning. Yeah, because if I lost this one, I lost the game. Okay, one more mission. Another duel. Uh, yeah, I could try it. I have seed. And he already used his Abyss Boa, so he won't be able to have any other character that have higher attack than 5. Although, if you have a 5 attack character, then this guy will be done and use his <laughs> seat test seat. Yeah, that will be draw. Oh well, that's a waste of time. Alright, I'm just going to win this one, I guess. It's a long mission, but whatever. Uh, 
I won't be able to finish this mission in a, a single turn because this requires 25 EP, which is a very, very high amount. That's fine. Uh, that's a bit annoying, but it should still be fine. So I don't think the opponent have strong cards left. Yeah, he used Sasara, and Sasara have a strong ability that lets you discard any character on the battlefield. And yeah, we're going to attack El Renewal. So we actually get the choice to left uh, El Renewal now, and we could go to Saja Village. And if we go to Saja Village, we could unlock the secrets we could entry character. And we could still do that as well as after beating his El Renewal, so I could showcase that later on. But yeah, there's like uh, five battles coming up, and the last three is going to be rather hard, so yeah. The Lucia fight is easy, this, this one is uh, fine. I'm kinda annoying that she played this facility though, so uh, it's still better for me to blow this up. I didn't realize I don't have the links to play Necklord. That kinda sucks. Uh, I should be able to do it next turn. Oh, uh, 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 I made a mistake. I shouldn't station Necklord. I have Necklord in my hand because I stationed it. Now the, net the other Necklord in my hand is useless. That was a stupid mistake. Should I try to win this one? I might actually try... Uh... Okay, I'll try to use Rina to discard his Agares. And if he have nothing else to play after that, I could win this military battle. And steal it from him. Nope, okay, never mind. Not going to bother. Yeah, because sometimes if I discard his first character, then he might not have played any other ones, and then that lets me steal the mission easily. Uh, that's not the case earlier, so... Not going to let that military battle strike further. Uh, military battles are usually slow to do. Wow, okay, I think he have Klaus in his hand, and that lets him discard my mission. That really sucks. As I said, you get to see Kiba's head a lot with this mission. Yeah, I'm just gonna let him win that mission. I'm not going to bother trying that uh, military battle. Where's my own missions? Oh, whoops. 
<laughs> I forgot I can't play Solonji or... Oh yeah, he plays Solonji, that's why I can't play with Solonji. Yeah, I didn't realize I can't play my Mazus. And that's why I couldn't win this one this turn yet, unfortunately. Okay, I'll go finish this with the duel with the Luca. And that will win me the game. Give me this one extra VP. The duel is a good way of uh, getting this one extra VP quickly. Although at the same time, when it comes to the harder fight that we will face soon in this final chapter, duel is very risky to play with because the opponents have high attack character as well. And you could easily lose the duel. Or draw, like uh, most of the time, if he, the opponent have a strong card as well, then the duel is gonna be a draw. And it's just gonna be a waste of time if that's the case if you're just gonna draw the duel. And now, time to face Han Cunningham. Yeah, just like how it was in Sukoden 2. So, yeah, we faced Lucy at the start, at the entrance of El Renewal, and now we face Han. So, the way the boss order works here in El Renewal is uh, same as Sukoden 2. Yeah, I completely do. Another duel, I could find that as well, actually. character to totally beat my seat, I'm not sure, like to make it this duel drop. If it does then yeah, this duel is going to be a waste of time, but I'm just going to reset. Oh hi, oh, <laughs> he played Luca, but because I already stationed my Luca, then his Luca actually end up doing nothing. So I still win the duel. Uh, another military battle, do I want to try win this one? I have to shoot. I have Rina as well, okay, I'll try this. I'll play Rina, discard his Han, and... If I'm lucky, he might not have any other character to play with this. And if that's the case, then I could actually win this one. Nice, I managed to steal this military battle from him. That's lucky. Alright, that's actually a very quick fight. Yeah, once in a while, if you got lucky, you could actually still uh, win the military battles quickly. Even though most of the time it's not worth it to try to win a military battle. Okay, so just like in Sukoden 2, now we face both Seed and Kulgan. We're gonna face them one by one. First is Seed, and after that we're gonna face Kulgan. Oh, oh, this is a, this is a dangerous start. Uh, this is not good. Oh, I forgot I have cool gun! I should have played cool gun! Damn it! I could have triggered the cool gun and seat combo earlier if I played with cool gun, but I forgot about it. That was my mistake. Ah, uh, that was a stupid mistake, and uh, okay, this is a bad start. Bad, bad start. Ah, he played this mission again. That actually was helpful. Not like you need um, a and an accurate emote. Not like this. Uh, yeah, see, so you have all the strong characters here in this, in this point of the game. Starts with a seed. Oh, nice! He doesn't have anything. That's lucky.
Okay, other than that first part, now this game has been going smooth. I just need one more mission. Yeah, the other two missions have been finished quickly. I might just play this beast rune even though like it's a bit overkill to get PvP when I'll need one more PvP, but still a mission that I could win in two turns. Oh, there's Nash from Suku Garden 2. So yeah, this game includes Nash from Suku Garden 2 as well. His card, his effect isn't really that strong though. Ah, okay, you know what, I'm gonna get you just finish this fight. So this fight is 1 PP if I win. Oh, can I? Um, don't have enough characters to win it. I don't have enough links to play it, which that other mission, unfortunately. Can I win this one? I can, okay. Okay, okay the fight kinda goes in a messy way, but it still works out at least. I am an idiot. So, Valeria is normally buffed if there's a Highland character on his side. And I use Rina to discard his seed. So there's no more Highland characters in uh, in his side and that debuffed my Valeria and made me unable to win that mission. Uh, that was a stupid mistake. I should have win that mission already but I don't. I, yeah. I mean, it's still fun. I still win this game but uh, it got slowed down unnecessarily there. Hey Socrates, welcome. Yeah, yeah Secret and Card Stories is a game that not a lot of people are aware of its existence, even like for a lot of like heavy Sukuden fans, a lot of them still isn't aware that this game exists. But anyway, yeah, it's obviously Auden is coming up in like a month, uh, Sukuden fans are gonna be happy hearing that, and... Uh, what do I do? Run the duel? Oh. Mission please? Okay. Military battle again, I'm probably just gonna ignore this. Do I have Rina? I might just do the usual thing of I uh, okay I'll just try to do this. I'll discard this character with Lina and see if he plays any other character or not. Because if he doesn't, then I could steal this mission. It's, it's very lucky. Very lucky. Oops. <laughs> I shouldn't bother doing that. I actually made a mistake, I don't need to play Seether to win this military mission. So there's a rumor of oh, bug AU then, there's a rumor that there are beta players who have found like crazy speedrun strats. I don't want to confirm if that rumor is true or not, we'll see when the game comes out. Oh, hang on, I could win this one with Luca Black straight away. Nice, that's very lucky. Again, military battles are usually slow to do, but this is a very unique case. I'm playing Luca, and it's gonna discard uh, all the cards in both player hands. So nobody could do anything anymore, and this military mission only requires 2,000 2, points. So just by playing one Luca card, I could finish this mission straight away. And that means winning him. That's actually a very, very good cool gun fight. You know what? If so, next boss fight coming up, and if I'm actually very lucky, it's not impossible to get the world record, even though like it's very unlikely, I think. But yeah, my, my current world record is still very bad. It's a world record just because I happen to use Turbo. So just recently, like uh, I decided that oh, Turbo is allowed in this game and it saves a lot of minutes. The current world record I have is still very bad. There's like several different losses, very bad, and it's still easily beatable. And if I got very lucky in this Luka fight, I might actually beat the world record, but I really doubt it though. I need to finish this 
fight in like less than 3 minutes, which I think is very unlikely because this fight is long. Yeah, so this is the last boss fight against Luca Blight. Right, so all this time, like spoilers, but we the that night raid story where Luca Blight got killed, it doesn't happen, right? So instead, Luca Blight, we're just gonna face him here in the end of El Renewal. And what happens is that he he bears the true beast rune. So he used the blood of the soldiers that got killed in the in this war battle in this in this other castle to fuel the beast rune. And that lets him uh, unlock the beast rune to true potential and he bears the true beast rune now. So it's like a supercharged form of Luca Blood and this yeah this 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 fight is actually fair. it's actually the hardest fight in the game. I think it's gonna ignore this one though. Again military battle usually takes forever and a waste of time. <laughs> we don't start to get into you. So yeah, this, this, the way this ending goes is actually like uh, very quite a lot different compared to the Sugurinto story. Yeah, I'm going to fight Luca Black as a true rune bearer. And yeah, this fight I is like yeah, I do have like a legit chance of losing because uh, the opponent is very strong. They have very strong cards and all that. Like I'm guessing my win rates maybe but like 70 or 70% for this one, so the chance of losing should be kinda high. Uh the, the we are behind schedule a bit, are these clan, so I, I don't uh... You know what? I have shoe. I might actually try to do this for battle, depending on what he pops up. Uh, so we already got, we's a bit behind schedule, so I'm fine with it. And I could show a bit of extra content after this as well. This game. Uh, I'm not going to get PB anyway. That's fine, doesn't matter if he wins the war battle. Although now that he's only one PP off, I can't let him win anything else. Uh... Yep, I can't let him win this one. So I have to actually play through this battle, even though like it's rather unlikely that I actually get to win it. This kind of sucks though. Oh, right, Honey Station. I can't play my Honey, I forgot about it. Yeah, I can't let him win this one. Like, it's still unlikely I will have enough military points to win this one, but I just have to drag this military battle, unfortunately. And yeah, there's no way I'll be TV here. Like, you know what? If I don't actually do commentary and, like, I don't I don't actually try to do commentary and, and just focus on actually winning this game, I think that... Yeah, if I just focus on like playing the game all this time, I think I will actually get PB here. But that's just because my PB actually sucks though. Okay, I think one more mission to beat Luca. Yeah, okay, I got the mission as well. But ah, damn it, I still can't let him in this one though. I still have to try to put cards. Unfortunately. Oh, okay, he doesn't have anything. I'm not going to drag it further. Ah, damn it, now that sucks. Uh, Kugan and both Kugan and Hannes. Okay, good thing I have Solon G. Solon G, his attack point sucks, but he have a very high military point, so I have in my deck just for cases like this, just in case I need to do the military battles. Because he's a very good military character. Can I win this one? Hang on, I... Oh, I'm actually winning this one, nice! Uh, so both Mazus and Solon G are strong military characters, and I think I'm lucky enough here to have high enough character military points to win this one. And so that's it, that's the final story boss. But yeah, so after this one, in the final cutscene, you will have a choice. You could just choose to be a leader, and that will finish the game, just like in Sukuren True. Or you could choose to try to find Joey, who have run away from this, uh, from El Renewal. So since we have the time for this, I'm going to show a bit of extra contents.
on this game. So I'm not just going to finish the Solar Land straight away. I'm going to play around a bit more. I need to watch out I don't select the... Okay, so if I select I understand that the first choice, then the game will be over. But I'll refuse to be leader and we'll drag this further. And we'll drag this game further to... And to finish the story now, I need to find Joey in Tenzin Pass. Oh, also all this time Nanami is live. So yeah, we get to watch... We get to bring Nanami to watch Joey die together. Anyway, Saja Village is unlocked and... I want to showcase such a village because we have a unique surprise. So we have a secret character here. Ducks are just like turkeys and chickens. What does it mean, eh? That's soup for dinner tonight. Oh hey, who is this? Hang on, isn't this game base supposed to be on uh, Suikoden too? Who is this guy? Also, his real name is Jordi, not Joe, by the way. <laughs> so the kids are like trying to play around with the top. Not knowing that... Oh, and, and you have the choice to help them duck or let them be, so... <laughs> Nanami said, hey, you can't just bully weak kids. Mr. Duck, are you okay? Are you hurt? I'm sure your parents will grow back. Are you actually trying to help me out? So yeah, he introduced himself as a skilled warrior from the Dark Clan. And we could choose to like not believe in him. I don't really believe Dark Clan. So what happened here? Joe Joe wants to find the our army. So he wants to find the AU army because he wants to join us and yeah, he he hears stories of the leader, Ryo or Nemurayama in this case. Um, Bahuin, I think Jordi was already kind of old by the time of Sukuren 3, so in this one, I guess he's still like a young adult. Not a teenager, but a young adult, I think, but he was already kind of old by the time of Sukuren 3. But anyway, yeah, so what happens is like, Joe wants to find Ryo to try to join the army, because he heard like, ins uh, ins inspiring stories of, uh, of the, of our army. But the battle is already over, because we already take the Elrein wheel, and... The war is already over, so Joe is kind of late. But yeah, and he's surprised that he still can't find uh, meet the leader himself. So yeah, he wants us to prove himself to him. So we're gonna have a duel with Joe. But actually, you know what? His card and his deck actually kind of sucks. It's kind of disappointing that uh, they put all of this hype against a secret character, but he actually sucks. So that's a bit of spoilers for this. Joe card deck kind of sucks. Uh. I'm just gonna blow up this facility. Also, for some reason, the music background of this is the cooking contest music. Oh, we could do the U9, although it doesn't really matter here because the opponent doesn't have any characters to play. So he should have like plenty of like Sergeant Joe cards in his deck, but I guess he just doesn't have it this time. Oh nah, he doesn't have the uh, Sergeant Joe is a leader, like he doesn't have the leader to play his cards, I guess. Ah, uh, another facility, what a waste of time. You know what? I'll let him play his card just to showcase what whatever he might have. Not going to yeah, I'm just gonna let him build this facility. Just for fun. And he doesn't showcase the Surgeon Joe card, that's disappointing. Ah oh man, it's still disappointing that he doesn't get to show the Surgeon Joe card. But okay, the Surgeon Joe card is kind of weak, so one reason is that uh it only have one link, I think. It only have like the G link, from what I remember. 
So it's kind of hard to get him to play him because you have need to have another character with the G link. Basically, it's it's a, it's a crap. Card. Wow, why did he waste our time to play this? Uh, I'm just going to ignore this one. Actually, you know what? I could just play Luca. Stop him from uh yeah, to end this turn and stop him from dragging it further. So there you go, we beat Surgeon Joe. So yeah, uh beating Surgeon Joe will earn you this card, Jordi. But again, it's a crappy card. You so okay, first of all, his card is still considered an animal instead of a human. So you know that animal symbol, so it's normally for other characters it'll be like, so if you look at other characters, uh, it'll be like a male or a female symbol, but it's a it's an animal symbol for Jordi, so they consider him an animal, and then he's, he only have one attack, 100 military points, so his stats are very weak, and you only have the G and I link, which are links that uh, not a lot of characters have, and it's hard to even to try to play him. And his effect is... Uh, this effect doesn't really do much either, so it's like yeah, it's a rather pointless card, unfortunately. It's a fun secret though, so yeah, they're, they're trying to do this as a promotional content for Suikoden 3. Anyway, time to end the story now. So we go to a place named Cliffs, and we meet Joey. So Joey is a, a very a lot of strong cards. So we only need three VP to win, but the opponent also only need three VP. So this fight is quick, but we can't underestimate him because he have strong cards and he have military cards like that. So this is the huge military mission that will, will give three VP. So I can't let him win this one. Uh, should have played Solon G. That's a mistake. But yeah, I I yeah, I can't let him win this one. Or rather, so I'll just instantly lose. Or actually, you know what? I could just let him win this one and reset the fight straight away. That might actually be better so that I don't have to play through this. Yeah, that actually might be a smart idea. Maybe you should have done that. But yeah, whatever the case, I just have to make sure that uh, he doesn't win this military battle if I want to stop him from winning. And I'll just play my own mission. So this beast rune gives 3 VP as well, so if I win this one, I'll finish the game straight away. Anyway, I'll let you guys hear this music. So, if you made like uh, enough correct choices throughout the game, the correct dialect choices throughout the game, Joey will be alive. But because I don't pay attention to my dialect choices, Joey will fall asleep. So we bring Nanami to yeah to watch Joey fall asleep, and that's it. That's the game. So yeah, that's Secret and Card Stories. And again, so this is, I played this with a translation patch made by a guy named Pokitex. He did this like 10 years ago. So, all thanks to him that uh, I could play this game and showcase it to all of you guys. And yeah, so that's this part of the Murayama Tribute Marathon. Again, so this marathon is a tribute to Yoshitaka Murayama, 
the creator of Suikoden and Aiden Sirius, who unfortunately passed away uh, last month, February 6th. So yeah, it's only natural we want to do this, uh, not a marathon as a tribute to him. And in just one month before Aiden got to re finally got released, uh, it's a rather bittersweet marathon, I guess. Uh, yeah, we'll. Yeah, the plan is to celebrate him with uh, with his marathon. One thing I want to say though that uh, of course I don't know Yoshi Murayama personally, but uh, his stories. Actually, thinking back of it, it really affects me. Like uh, his his story is just like well, this one thing to say is it's just incredible, and I learned a lot from his story about how. It provides a lot of insights on how human conflicts and human relationship works in general, and it's a kind of story that doesn't really get explored a lot in other JRPGs. And because of all the orders, uh, we got united through this uh, speedrunning community and uh, the student fan base in the speedrunning community, and yeah, it's all at the end, all of it is thanks to him. And yeah, it's yeah, I just have to say. It. Uh, it's the first time I ever grieved to someone that I don't even know personally, and like I, yeah, this matter is a tribute to him. And let us all do a toast for Murayama, and celebrate his works. And I'll pray that uh he'll be able wherever he is he'll be able to saw his uh work his final work coming up soon that got released gonna be released soon in like a month and he's be able to see it will be enjoyed by a lot of millions of people and gonna be celebrated by a lot of people a lot of newcomers as well in the Aiden series yes so that's it that's it for this game that's it for the showcase